thank you for what you are doing in our midst, what you have done, what you're about to do in our midst. We thank you so much for making it possible we can gather together on a day like today to worship you, to praise you, to glorify you, to magnify your name. I pray once again, Lord, you think through my thoughts, speak through my vocal cords, let your word go forth, let it accomplish that which you've sent to accomplish. Let a fresh note to rest upon your people to hear your word, to receive your word. And I thank you, Father, by your word, by your spirit, you'll always confirm your word by signs, wonders, and miracles. Let a fresh note to rest upon us, even now, to hear what you have to say through us. I pray, Lord, you give us sensitive ears to hear what you say. And we give you all the glory and the praise. And I commit the ministry of the word of God into your hands. And I thank you, as your will is done in heaven, let it be done in our midst, in our lives, individually and collectively. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glory to God. Um, those of you who were with us at Tuesday night in the Bible study, we, were, we took a look at, if you can recall in the Bible study, we were um, taking a look at the times that we're in, in the sense that I shared with you how not only is this the time that kings go to war, because we're still in springtime, and if you go back and even last year when, you remember the Israel-Gaza war took place? That was springtime, right? And, um, you know, so in the Bible study, we were talking about how kings go to war in springtime. And also, we were showing you that day, it was in the news, headlines. And, 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 uh, and later on in the week, it came out in the main, light, in the main headlines. Um, but at that day, it wasn't on the main headlines, how Israel was... Um, how the Minister of Defense said that that um, Iran is is a banner of weeks a week away from getting to that point where they have a nuclear capability. So they were saying that they can't wait anymore they can, because to wait another year would be cause of, would be a, 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 be a serious problem for Israel. And and the, and the reason why Israel has a, a concern with Iran getting nuclear capability because Iran has vowed that they will destroy Israel completely. They've vowed that. You know, they're not like other nations that are, that are in the process of getting nuclear capability or have it and threatening Israel, but they've threatened Israel and says, we, we want to get rid of you and we're going to get rid of you. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there's this, there's, this, there's this war that's been going on, which it hasn't really reached the mainline head news, news, really. But for the past several years, Israel has been constantly just, just blowing up frustrating Iran, because Iran is setting up the bases in, in Syria and uh, um, transporting their weapons into, from, Iraq, from Iran into Iraq, into Iraq, into Syria, and also into Lebanon, and Israel has been interrupting that, and they've had a fair amount of success, not all the time, but a fair amount of success to, to, to kind of slow that down. And um, so we know that uh, just, 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 just recently, for the first time, um, the Russian air defense missile system fired at an Israeli plane, and which has set a new tone, which um, to us, those of you who understand scriptures, those of you who read the Bible, should really show you that surely we're truly moving closer and closer to that time where the Bible talks about in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, and we often refer to it as God may God war. There's two God may God wars. There's one down in the book of Revelations, which will come, um, you know, after the millennial reign, mm -hmm. the thousand year reign when we're reigning with Christ. But there's one that is coming up fast on the horizon. And um, so by Russia shooting at an Israeli plane, it tells, it's showing you how much closer we are to this. Do you see? And therefore, I trust none of you are getting tired of hearing any of this because really when we hear this and we see it in the news and we see what's going on, we understand what's going on, what it should be doing, it should be strengthening you to realize what God said in his word is true. That what he said, it is going to come to pass and it is playing out right before you. We get, we have an opportunity to have front row seats, so to speak. Um, to watch and see how this plays out because we know it's going to happen. We know ahead of time what the, uh, what the end result is going to be. And we, we get to watch it unfold when we understand the scriptures. So, so, you know, some people wonder, well, why do we need to know um, 
prophecy, the Bible, because you know a good portion of the Bible is, is prophetic. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons is that you can know what's happening, you can know that what God said would happen, that he keeps his word, he's watching over his word to perform it, and his word will come to pass, and therefore you can trust his word, you can trust God, and you can hook up a link up with God, and it says, know that you're, it's a sure foundation. In other words, what this should be doing should be encouraging us to, to know that if there's any doubt about his word, because you know, some people may question his word in the sense that what, you know, if you read some books in the Old Testament, they were written thousands of years ago. And then even the New Testament, 2,000 years ago. So it's a long time ago some of these books have been written. Mm -hmm. you know, so for some folks, that would raise a lot of doubt. But yet, God knew what would happen 2,000 years later, or 3,000 years later, or 4,000 years mm -hmm. later. He knew all about that. 5,000 years later, when he, when he started dictating the first five books of the, of the Bible to uh, Moses, we see from the Word of God that God's called the things that, um, um, the things that are gonna play out in the end time, he called them out in the beginning. So they're there for us to see if we want to see Hallelujah. it. And, and therefore, when we see these things unfolding on the on the on the, the world scenes, what it should be doing is encouraging you to say, truly, God's word is true. Truly, God is God. If God, if, if this is unfolding, that truly all everything else what God says is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Meaning, He is going to come for His church. Amen. Meaning, there is going to be a judgment. Mm -hmm. There is going to be a seven years of terrible. The Bible calls it tribulation on planet Earth. Uh, just like when we see in the book of Genesis, um, God gave Pharaoh some dreams, God used Joseph to interpret those dreams, and uh, Joseph said, you know, Pharaoh, you're going to have seven years of plenty, seven years of famine is coming, so you need to prepare during the seven years of plenty, prepare for the seven years of famine. And we see a lot of things playing out. Um, we see that actually did come to pass. And it's a good thing they listened to Joseph, and it's a good thing that Joseph became in charge, second in command, because they prepared for what was coming. God sends his word ahead of time so we can prepare. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Again, if you're wondering about why do we need to have prophecy in the word of God, so that you can be prepared. Yes. Right? Yes. And therefore, Joseph was able, the wisdom that God gave Joseph, and they listened to his wisdom. It was well with Egypt. It was well with the other countries around them. They didn't perish because God forewarned ahead of time and they prepared. Well, God hasn't changed his methods. Mm -hmm. He's still warning ahead of time. He's given us 66 books in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Some say there's other books outside of that. And, that, and, and that's, you know, it really doesn't matter. We've got 66 to work with. Mm -hmm. And these 66 work quite well. And these 66 that we have are, are breathed, are inspired of God. We, we can say that for sure. The ones that are outside of the 66, maybe some of them may be inspired, maybe some of them may not be inspired. You may want to read them, you may not want to read them, it really doesn't matter. Well, what really matters is these 66. And these 66, because God has breathed on them, we know that God inspired, you can rest assured that what He said, you can, you, you, you can rely on it. And this is where we ought to be, every one of us. Amen. We should be taking confidence in what God's Word says, especially when we see what is playing out on the global scene. Mm -hmm. We see even last week, Sunday night, there was a blood moon. Not just on any ordinary time, it happened to be on the time of the second Passover. Mm -hmm. And you know, I like to think of the second Passover, God giving people a second chance. Mm -hmm. God is a God of a second chance. Yes. And uh, um, if you doubt it, just question yourself. You just, 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 just look at yourself. Yes. You know, when you and I have blown it many times, but God didn't give up on us. I'm amazed yes. at God sometimes, yes. to tell you the truth. Yes. That wow. He has, I, to, to, to tell you, I'm just amazed at Him. Because I think about myself, I look at other human beings, I see other human beings' imperfections, we know our own imperfections, we know where we fall short, do we not? Yes. We have not arrived, we're not, we're not perfect, we're not goody two shoes, we may think we are, but we're not. Or we may tend to uh, act like we are, that we got it all together, and in reality we don't. Mm -hmm. um, not outside of Christ, not without Christ. And then when I just marvel that He still loves us. Yeah. When we mess up, He still has His hand still outstretched towards yes. us. Yes. I'm just amazed at that. Yeah. And, and where, where I sometimes are impatient with other people, or I may say to, you know, you know, 
kind of wash my hands off that individual, individuals or, or uh, you know, I give up, so to speak. I don't really want to have anything more to do with them. There's nothing more can be done. Not God. God hasn't given up. Yeah. Mm. Praise God. And thank God he didn't wash his hands off of us when we oh, messed yeah. up. Right. You know? Yeah. Thank, thank God. So, I, so, we, so we have to be very grateful and thankful yeah. that it's a good thing God hasn't come yet because he's still giving people an opportunity to get right with him, to get yeah. saved, to yeah. come into the right relationship with, 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 yeah. with him. And, and, and the longer this takes, it just goes to show how gracious he is, how patient he is. But the time is running out. So we saw the blood moon last Sunday night. Some of you saw it. And, and um, you know, that blood moon affected a good portion of the world. And, uh, um, and according to the prophecy, according to the omens and all that, wherever it, it affects, those areas need to look out because it's a warning. God sent his warnings ahead of time. Then we see, as a week began to unfold, we see on Tuesday, you know, on Tuesday, and I'm sharing on Bible study, how the Minister of Defense for Israel was saying that they can't not wait any longer. That's basically in his speech. You can go look up his speech, what he had to say. They can't wait any longer. They've got to do something about it. And it, and it happened to be they're actually in military exercises. All the branches of the military are preparing for an attack on Iran and preparing for a counterattack. And you know, so all parts of the civil, the, the civilian population plus the military, they're all coordinated and planning, and they've been doing it for a while now. They're going to continue to do it. And to my surprise, I didn't realize that the United States was participating in the military exercise. I said, "Wow, I didn't expect them to be participating in that." You know, in the preparation. You see, and you know, with these modern-day armies, they like to practice. They like to simulate. They like to go through the what if, what if scenarios first, get all the kinks eyed out before they actually launch the thing, yeah. which makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what Russia did before they went into Ukraine. I mean, they were at it for weeks, mm -hmm. and they kept telling the world that you you know we're not going to attack, we're not going to attack. But I remember, if you know the playbook, I remember I said to Pastor Fe, I said in history, past history, when they went in to do their military exercises, they turned the military exercise into the real thing. And sure enough, it played out in February. They turned into the real thing. They went from straight from military exercise straight to an attack. Mm -hmm. you, you know, and you know, and they're still in Ukraine, and, and they're still there, and a lot of people have lost their lives as a result of it. We see China doing the same thing too, yeah. with 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 Taiwan. So it's just a matter of time before China goes in. So we are in a very pivotal year. 2022 is a very pivotal year, yes, and we should not lose sight of that. In that sense, that. Um, uh, things are happening since. The warnings are there in the heavens, as we saw last Sunday night, those of who, who saw it, and whether you saw it or not, it came and went, it happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Israel has been planning to do their thing. We looked at uh, Isaiah chapter 17, if you remember. The Bible says in verse 1 how Damascus was a ruinous heap. Yeah. Yes? Yeah, yeah. All right. So um, let me just read an article here to you. Uh, just just a, a recent one, May the 21st. Um, he says, Israel missile strikes have killed three near Syria's capital in Damascus. So this is getting closer, right? This is getting much closer, right? So today is May the 21st. So this happened today, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and he goes on and says, Israel's surface to surface missiles have killed three people in the, in the Syrian capital, Damascus. State media reported the missiles came from the Israeli <coughs> occupied Golan Heights. And that's the area that Russia wants. They want the Golan Heights. Mm -hmm. Right? And some were intercepted by the Syrian air defense, an unarmed, unnamed military source said on Friday. Um, so, well, it's reported today, but this happened yesterday. Israeli, and you know, so they call the Israeli, the enemy had carried out an aggression. And, and the article goes on saying how they had lost some martyrs and all that. It turns out these people that got killed were uh, actually military folks. Um, they were um, obviously from Israel's point of view, they do so much surveillance that when they see and they sense a threat, or they sense that they're about to set up something, or they're about to launch something, or they're assembling something, mm -hmm. then they take a preemptive strike mm -hmm. to just put a stop to that, mm -hmm. to frustrate them, so they don't, they don't get that thing to establish. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what they've been doing for the past several years. But what I want to point out to you, and piggybacking from Bible study on Tuesday, is that this this is near the capital of Damascus. So we're getting closer and closer to this. In other words, Isaiah chapter 17, verse 1, 
we're getting closer and closer to that becoming a reality. And what I believe is going to happen first is that that will happen first. Now, we do not know. The Bible doesn't tell us. Like, if you go to Isaiah 17, verse 1, let's just go there for a moment. The Bible doesn't tell us how Damascus ends up being ruined, right? Or who's responsible for it. The Bible doesn't tell us, so we don't want, so, you know, I know there's been some speculations and things like that, and we're not here to speculate, but the fact is that it's, become, it's going to become the oldest city in the world called Damascus is going to end up being a ruinous heap. This is what the Word of God says here. It says, the burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. It's fast approaching that that city is going to end up being completely a rubble. Whether Israel is responsible for making that happen, we do not know. Whether they end up doing it to themselves, because, you know, we've seen in the past in the Old Testament, when the enemy uh, would uh, come against Israel, God would create a, such a, a confusion that they end up attacking each other and they end up destroying themselves. We saw last year when, when um, the war with Gaza was taking place on several occasions, not all the time, when, when, when the Hamas launched rockets to go into Israel, the rockets fell back and blew them up. Yeah. And it could be that, it could be that um, um, the enemy of Israel in Damascus might try to attempt to launch something so big and so powerful and it could be it falls back on them and blows them to smithereens. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is they'll blame Israel. However it happens, however, it, however Damascus ends up being ruined, rest assured Israel will get blamed. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? And therefore, therefore, then you'll see the other scriptures come into play where the Bible says that, that um, uh, Jerusalem, Israel will become a burden, mm -hmm. that, you know, a burden to the world. You, 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 you know, that will become more real. And everybody will turn on Israel and, um, and hold them responsible for it. So the Bible doesn't tell us how it's going to happen, but I believe this is going to happen first. And it looks like we're getting closer and closer to it. Mm -hmm. And it could be that um, because Israel is going through their exercises, and it could be that they're in preparation, they may see a threat, and they may launch a preemptive strike against Damascus. They may, and if they do, it's because of, it's out of desperation. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, because they're thinking about we need to preserve a nation, we need to preserve a people. Mm -hmm. we, we cannot allow ourselves to, uh, to just be destroyed just like that. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Mm -hmm. um, well. It's going to unfold. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the enemy will want to take vengeance on Israel. And then we see Ezekiel chapter 38. 39 play now, God may go war. Mm -hmm. So we're moving closer and closer to all of this. Yes. So having said all that, as we're moving closer and closer every day, every hour is coming closer and closer to all this, we, as a church, who's waiting for the coming of the Lord, is moving closer and closer to the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because I firmly believe what the Bible says in First Thessalonians, that God has not appointed us, the church, unto wrath. Now, if we look at that for a moment, let's just look at that for a moment because I know some people have been questioning and asking questions. And uh, um, if we just go there for a moment, in verse 9, and this is not the only verse that God's Word speaks about it, that I know some Christians believe that, um, that uh, the church will go through the tribulation. Some, church, some Christians believe that the church will go through partway through the tribulation, so maybe halfway through God will rescue the church. Some believe that the church will go through the entire tribulation, seven years, and then at the end, God will come and get the church. But the scriptures teach, and this is what I firmly believe, and I'd like you to, 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 to uh, I encourage you to look at the scriptures. It says here, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, it says, For God has not appointed us unto wrath. All right? You need to remind yourself about that. We're living in trouble sometimes. And... We don't know what's going to be the headlines tomorrow. True, we don't know what's going to be the headlines at the end of next week. True. True. But whatever those headlines are, you don't need to be panicking. Mm -hmm. 
and wondering about, oh, we're in tribulation, we're going through this, and we're, it's going to get rough, it's going to get terrible, and all this kind of stuff. It may get a bit bumpy a little while leading up to the coming of the Lord. When I said, for the rapture to take place, it may get a little bit rough, but God is not going to forsake the church, his bride. So, 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 so let, let, let me finish the verse. It says here, for God has not appointed us unto wrath. Okay? And, and the wrath is God's judgment. When you go to the book of Revelations, in particular chapter 6, you see that the wrath of the Lamb of God, be, when as, as Jesus begins to open up the seals, there's a rider that goes on the white horse, and he's, he represents the Antichrist. And he goes conquering. There's a rider that goes on the red horse. He takes peace from the earth. That's war. All right? There's another rider that goes on a black horse. And he has, has some, um, scales. The economy is going to be affected. And there's going to be famine. How do we know we're close to that? Look around. You'll see that there's a drought in play right as we speak. There are freshwater lakes in the United States that are drying up. And that's going to cause a problem for those states because there's some other states that share certain fresh water and they're going to be asking for water and they're going to be start to fight over water as these lakes dry up. This is going to become a bone of contention. Right? Fresh water lakes are drying up. So there's a drought in play. And when you know when drought's in play, famine is not far from it. We all already know that this food, they're already talking about food shortages that's going to start to really affect this part of the world next month in June, especially the shelves. So we know it's coming. So when we see all this, the writer with the balancing scales, um, telling us about famine, telling about you know, um, you know, death and famine and all that, pestilence, all that associated with that, we, that's all part of the wrath of God. Do, do, do you see? And, and then, and then we, you continue reading about those other horses, the apocalyptic horses, all of these are the wrath of God. Actually, the wrath of the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is God. Mm -hmm. Then later on, you read about in the book of Revelations about the trumpet judgments. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the trumpet judgments is the wrath of God, and the seal judgments is the wrath of the Lamb of God. Mm -hmm. And then in the mix of all that, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that, that when Satan gets cast down from the second heaven down to planet Earth, and now he's restricted to Earth. The Bible says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for Satan has come down with what? Great wrath. Yeah. So, this is the wrath that the Bible is talking about. Mm -hmm. In verse 9 it says, For God has not appointed us unto wrath. Mm -hmm. Right? Who's us? It's the church. Mm -hmm. Alright? I'm deliberately taking time for this because questions are being asked and some people are questioning and especially, and you see saints, and as we, the headlines that are going to be coming in the near future, you don't want to be panicking. You are, you want to have this already settled already. Praise God. All right. Yeah. You know, don't want to have this settled already because yes. the scripture says, it says, but it says, for God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain what salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you look at the headlines only, you can easily panic. Even last Sunday night. It was reported that Russia was moving around their, 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 their nuclear bombs and moving them closer to the border of Finland. And you know this past week Finland and Sweden has made the application to join NATO. And, and Russia, knowing what they were planning to do, uh, has re removed them around. You said, well, how can they tell? By satellite. Those things give off a certain uh, heat and the satellites can pick up on them. And the satellites know when there's movement of nuclear bombs. They, they, they know all this. This is not new to them. And at the same time, the United States, working with Europe and NATO, has surrounded Russia with nuclear bombs. So you're not seeing this in the main headlines. But what's going on here? They're all preparing. They're, made, they're preparing for a major showdown. Yes. And it's just a matter of time. And, and that's why the Lord was speaking to us last week. He said, the end has come. Amen. Right? And now when we hear that, we may say, well, it's right now. No, no, it doesn't necessarily have to be right now. It could be weeks from now. It could be months from now. Yeah.
But as far as God is concerned, the end has come. God speaks from a spiritual point of view first. It takes a little while sometimes for things to show and manifest in the, in the physical realm. But saints, when we know some of these things that are going on, they're preparing. So we should not be alarmed when we see the headlines. And the headlines that are going to come, because they're going to be coming. And the scripture is telling us, let me read it again. For God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean, Pastor Paul? It means that God has plans in place to remove the church before the wrath of God is poured out. Before the seven years of tribulation. Before the, it's also called the day of the Lord. He has plans to remove his bride, to remove the church. That's the good news. Hallelujah. So therefore, you should encourage yourself with this, that you don't have to be concerned about what is coming or what the headlines are saying or what, or what, um, or, or what is going on. If China decides to attack Taiwan tomorrow, you wake up and that's the headlines, don't panic. We're living in the times. Everything is moving towards us. I remember I shared with you uh, the, 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 um, not too long ago about the, um, the gematria that as far as the gematria is concerned, World War III has started already. Whether we want to admit it or not. All right, just go back to February 24th and you do the gematria on that, it all points to the same numbers as World War II, same numbers as World War I. This war that started in February 24th in Ukraine is the same gematria number, it's telling us World War III, so that's, spiritually speaking, it has begun. And what I find interesting, uh, you know, we're seeing more and more headlines, questions, has World War Three started? Is this the beginning of World War Three? People are asking those questions. Here's the answer, yes. Oh. You know, and some people are looking for the Big Bang first to then admit that World War Three has started. Mm -hmm. No, we're not looking for the Big Bang. We look at the scriptures, we look at the spiritual thing first, we look at the spiritual source first, and when we understand that, we know exactly what is going on. Preach. Yes. I, I, you all understand this? So, so says, um, be encouraged. We are not going to be going through this. Amen. All right? Amen. We may go through a little bit of rough waters, but this is all the beginning because if you could, if, if whatever you experience, if you consider rough waters, it's nothing compared to what is coming. Mm -hmm. Do you see? Yeah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're not appointed unto wrath. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We don't want to have anything to do with the wrath of God. And it's not something that, it's just something the church doesn't talk much about. You know, the church will talk a lot about the love of God. And that's good, we should. But there's more to God than just the love of God. There's a, there's a part of Him that's a wrath. You don't want to get that side. Right? And because um, once wrath of God is left, it's like an entity. It will not return back to God until it's accomplished what it's sent to accomplish. Yeah. You want to see what the wrath of God looks like? Look at what's going on in hell. In hell. Oh, oh, oh. All kinds of horrible things are going on. Who's responsible for those systems down there? It's not Satan. Remember, the Bible tells us that God created, according to the book of Matthew, God created hell for the devil and his angels. All the systems there, God created. That's the wrath of God. And that thing is like eternal. So think about some folks who have been there for the past 4,000 years, the past 5,000 years, right? Constantly being tormented. They'll remember that they sinned against the living God. They'll remember they didn't get right with God and they had an opportunity. Do you see? That's like an example of the wrath of God. You don't want to have anything to do with the wrath of God. And God doesn't want you to have anything to do with it. And hey. therefore the Bible says in this verse, He's appointed us unto salvation through Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. It's only through Him. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no other name given under heaven but by the name of Jesus whereby a man can be saved. Amen. Men can be saved. Amen. And we should not lose sight of that. Amen. Amen. It's not in heaven. It's here on earth. Under heaven. The name of Jesus has been given so that if you want to get saved, if whoever wants to get saved, that's how we get saved, through Jesus. Yeah. Salvation is more than just having your sins forgiven. Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Amen? Yeah. 
Amen. It's much larger than that. Mm -hmm. It includes your health. Mm -hmm. It includes deliverance. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yes, it includes having your sins forgiven, but it's more than just having your sins forgiven. Thank God. It includes your finances. It in includes your welfare. It includes everything about you. That's what salvation is all about. That's why we can see Jesus when saying to individuals in the New Testament, when they came up to him or he came up to them and he was ministering to them, particularly the woman with the issue of blood, he said, Thy faith has made thee whole. W-H-O-L-E. You go and whole. Or another word, another way you can say, you know, like shalom, like, you, you know, like nothing missing, nothing broken. Mm -hmm. Whatever was missing, everything is now being put back together. So if you think of that woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, she may have been financially broke. Bible says she spent all she had. Now God's restoring her finances. We do not know if she was married or not, if she had a husband or a family. If she did, and if all that had, if she had lost all that, all that be restored. Mm -hmm. You all seen this? Yes. Amen. That's what salvation is all about. It's not just having your sins forgiven. Yes. And, and therefore, we shouldn't get bent out of shit when we come to church. Mm -hmm. If everybody is saved, we don't need a salvation message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you hearing this? Yes. If everybody in church is saved, the majority of people say you don't need a salvation message. Preach. You need there's more to, to serving God, there's more to walking in this walk than just getting salvation. Salvation is the beginning of it. Yes. It's a start. But as I look around in the sanctuary and I see I know everybody in this room is saved. We don't need a salvation message here. Okay. Not mind if a visitor comes in, I'm not too sure about it, then as the Lord leads, we may have to pivot a little bit mm -hmm. to present the message, but we do not need a salvation message. Mm -hmm. And so forth, saints, if you've got that mindset, you know what, we haven't heard the salvation message lately, you need to get out of that mindset. Mm -hmm. If that's what, I know some Christians think that way, because that's the way we were brought up. Every time you go to church, you have to hear about the salvation message. There's more to salvation than the salvation message. Amen. 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 True. <clears throat> you understand this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no point in presenting if everybody's saved. Mm -hmm. There's other things in the Word of God we need to hear. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And what has God had us past focus on for the past couple of years during this pandemic? It's all about getting prepared because we're leaving. Because of what is coming. Amen. This world is transitioning. Mm -hmm. And it continues to transition. Mm -hmm. And we're getting, we are much closer to the tribulation days than what we were two years ago. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're now into the third year now of this pandemic. How are we not? Yes. And what's going on? What, do you, have you been seeing what's going on lately? Monkeypox? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Yeah. It's spreading? Yeah. What, what I find interesting, they wanted to first start blaming saying it's coming from Africa. That's what they were saying at first. This is a week or two ago when I was reading about it. They say it's come from Africa. But now they're realizing that it's springing up in different places where these people had no contact with anybody coming from Africa. Nobody traveled. It's just showing up. It tells you it's a spiritual thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. 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 One doesn't have to travel to get it. It's another pestilence. It's another plague. And if you see pictures of it, it looks ugly. A bunch of boils all over it. I guess it was somewhat like what you see in the Old Testament when, um, uh, when the boils, when one of the plagues was boils, was it not? Mm -hmm. yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. What are we experiencing? We're experiencing plagues like what they, they experienced in Egypt before God brought the Israelites out of Egypt. Preach. Yes. And what is the world experiencing? The world is experiencing pestilence and plagues before God brings the church out. The church, the world is about to birth the church out of this whole system. But we're seeing these plagues. We're seeing all these horrible things that are taking place. I see, you know, but now you see now, now you know why you need salvation. Now you know why there's more to salvation than just having your sins forgiven. So you're protected from this sort of stuff. You don't have to be afraid to go to the grocery store or go out of the mall or wherever and think you're going to end up with monkeypox. But then again, if you were afraid of the, of the, of the uh, COVID, then you're going to have a problem with this. If you never learn to get the victory or exercise your faith mm -hmm. and, say, and say, you know what, I believe the blood of Jesus is so 
powerful. It can cover me. It can protect me. It can preserve me that I do not get infected. And if for any reason that my immune system is down and I do get infected, I will recover in no time. It will not be hurtful to me. But if you never got the victory over that and you're fearful and afraid to be amongst people, with this monkeypox thing, you're going to have a problem. And, what's, and, and as long as the Lord has the church remaining here until he comes, think it's going to get worse and worse and worse. What are you going to do? Be end up a hermit? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, saints. It's time to exercise our faith. Mm -hmm. You see, saints, we're living in the days where the saying goes is where the, where the rubber meets the road, where the tire is running on the road. In other words, we have to exercise our faith. We can't just talk about it. Three years ago, prior to the pandemic, um, there was a lot of talk about faith. <coughs> was it not? Some people were walking in faith, some people were not. But now we're living in days you have no choice. True. Either you are walking in the, in the you are exercising your faith or not. And won't you if you choose not to exercise your faith because then it's just all talk. We need to move beyond the point of just talking. Do you truly believe what God's word says? Amen. Does it mean you don't wear a mask? I'm not saying that. Does it mean that you don't take uh, uh, supplements or vitamins or whatever you have to take? I'm not saying that. You've got to exercise wisdom and do what you know what is right. Mm -hmm. mm. Does it mean that, well, I'm not going to wash my hands because I'm going to prove I really trust God? That's foolishness. <laughs> you wash your hands as often as you can. Mm -hmm. Because you come in contact with all kinds of germs and viruses. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You do what you know to do. But since, we're living in a day and age, things are getting worse. Things are escalating. And if you haven't got the victory over COVID, you better start to learn to get the victory. Whether you've got the vaccine or not, mm -hmm. you've got to start to learn to get the victory. Start to walk in faith. It's all about God keeping you. That's what salvation is all about. It's all about deliverance. It's all about Him protecting you. It's all about Him preserving you. Yes. This is beyond having your sins forgiven. Yes. Is this making sense to you? Yes. Yes. Will God start to walk in this if, is this if you're not? And if you find yourself fearful, ask God to remove the fear. God says in the New Testament, the Word of God says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. I like that. Love. Love covers a multitude of faults, does it not? Yes. Power. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love. And what? A sound mind. In other words, you're going to think right. Right? You're not worried. You're not paranoid. Oh, I don't know if I should go too close to that individual or do this or that or whatever. You're going to exercise some caution, yes. You're going to exercise some wisdom, yes. You're not going to be careless and foolish, but you don't have to be fearful. You don't have to be fearful because fear cripples people. Fear will paralyze you. Mm. Remember what the man who received the one talent said to, Jesus, to, to, to the Lord? He mm. said, I was afraid. Mm. It cost him. He was cast into out of darkness mm -hmm. because he allowed fear to overtake him. Mm. Saints, let's not be that way. Mm. Amen? Mm. If fear is getting a hold of you and that's hindering you from do what you are normally supposed to do, or going to church, or whatever the things, these things, you need to, you really need to get along with God and ask God to deliver you, set you free, because as I said in the past, what we've experienced with COVID, what is coming, is going to make COVID look like nothing. Mm -hmm. So let's develop our faith, saints. As long as we're on this side of heaven, let's learn to develop our faith to trust God. Amen. 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 We're not going to be careless. We're not going to be foolish. You're not, you're not going to go in amongst, a, amongst a crowd of people and just pretend everything is okay. You're going to be cautious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. Exercise in wisdom. Glory to God. Saints, let's just exercise what God has given to us. Every, God has given every, every one of us faith. Mm -hmm. Let's use it. Amen? Amen? We're living in some very interesting times. So, I believe what God is saying, don't be alarmed by the headlines. They're, they're going to come. They're even starting to show UFOs, pictures of them. Remember last fall I said this is what the narrative is going to be? Yeah. 
Yeah. They're going to start, and now they're going to start to now, you know, all the time they would deny it, or they, would, they wouldn't even talk about it. There's certain things, but you see, you can, you, 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 you can tell where they're going, how the narrative is going to change, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and where it's changing to, because they're preparing the world for other things that are coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I saw in the news the other day a picture of a, what they call a UFO, and, and this is coming more common now. Well, why is this all about? Because now they want to start to start to open up and start talking about aliens because there's coming a time when they have no choice. So they've got to be kind of like, kind of get in front of it because they know what is coming. Do you see? In, in other words, condition the population. This is what's happening. And uh, so as we understand these things, and we look around, let us truly consider what is happening. When they shall say, say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as a woman in travail. Let us not lose sight of what's going on. Do not be discouraged. Amen? And uh, don't be alarmed by the headlines, because there are going to be some serious headlines. You just stay secure in Christ. Amen. Right? right? Don't get out of him. You stay in him. He says, if my word abide in you and you abide in me, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto to you. In other words, it will be well. Remain in him. He said, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branch. You can do nothing without me. Remain in Christ. Hallelujah. No matter what happens, no matter what the headlines are, Remain in Christ. It will be well with you. You step out of that, then it, there's no guarantee it's going to be well with you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Interesting times. Let us stand. I'm going to invite Minister Nicholas to lead us in a couple of prayer points. And Minister Paul, you come and lead us in communion. And uh, we are going to conclude. I trust that you've received a something today Amen. if at least know this just be reminded God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind and God has not appointed us unto wrath before everything starts coming going seriously wrong the Lord will remove the church Amen. and everything is pointing in that direction the next biggest event He's going to remove us. Amen. So stay focused, stay committed, stay faithful. Don't lose sight. It's good all what is happening around the world because it lets us know we are closer than what we realize. True. So if you realize that when you see these things, these headlines, hallelujah, then you realize, hey, this is indicating we're much closer. Mm -hmm. And if it strengthens your walk with the Lord, that is a good thing. Because now you're looking up. The Bible says, watch and pray. Glory to God. Watch and pray. Mm -hmm. Let's continue to watch. As we heard last night, the World Health Organization is, is in the process of taking away uh, sovereignty from various countries. Or various countries are giving up their sovereignties. Yeah. Let's continue to pray that Canada does not go down that road. Mm -hmm. uh, at least not now. Mm -hmm. You know, we know that all the nations will eventually give up their sovereignty to the global government. Mm -hmm. um, but Again, it's indicating how close we are to where we are on God's timetable. Mm -hmm. All right? So, hallelujah. Interesting times. Glory to God.